Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Bible study time, my friends. May God bless you. Good morning, cuz. Brother Charles Brown, Philadelphia, South. I mean, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. God bless you, cuz. God bless you all for uh, logging on this morning for our Bible study, September the 9th. Uh, 2020. What a beautiful day. Good morning, Miss Dawkins. As you continue to log on again, we thank you so much for uh, having the Lord on your mind, for having Bible study uh, in your uh, agenda today. We're so thankful for your presence. Again, as you continue to log on, we want to thank you. Good morning, uh, Trustee Bonner. Good morning, Miss Janet. God bless you. Good morning, Brother Chapel. Amen. Good morning, Roger McGill. God bless you. Good morning, Miss Wittenberg, Miss Drake, Miss Curtis, all the way in High Point, uh, Jamestown, North Carolina. My friend and sister. God bless you so much. Good morning, Miss Merrill, Little John, Miss McGill, Sheila, Miss McCann. I know you can. All the way in the D.C. metro area. Amen. Of our nation's capital. God bless you, uh, Trustee Hui. Again, we're so uh, blessed to have all of you on this morning as we uh, study God's word. Miss Drain in New York, uh, Miss Henderson up in Connecticut. God bless you. Hey, we're representing the United States um, in a mighty good way. Good morning, Miss McGill, Louise McGill. And I'm excited about Bible study. We're still looking at the omnipotence of God. Uh, looking at his power, we looked at last week how even uh, we studied how the devil can give you things. How the devil said he will give you power if you would worship him. And so our focus today is going to be on God, again on his power uh, that he blesses us with, uh, to do godly things with, to do uh, uh, peaceful and, and, and progressive things with. Amen. That's, amen, how we know it's God. Good morning. Uh, and Dot, good morning, Miss Ernest Team. Again, we thank you. Bow your heads with me in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you uh, again for uh, all your blessings. God, we praying again. Oh uh, God, this is not the first time we prayed today, but oh God, this is a new occasion. God, this is a new a reason to pray. And our, our reasoning, God, is just because we need you. We need you to help us with this study. We need you, O oh God, to give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, insight. O oh God, we pray that you will give us, uh, you said in your word, and all that get and get understanding. And Father, you alone allows that to occur. God, touch our minds and hearts and, and God, our spirits, so that we can be one with you. Uh, we are one in the spirit with you, O oh Father. We worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you. For my brothers, sisters, and friends, and neighbors, and family members, God, who are, are, are on right now for this Bible study. I pray, oh God, for others on their jobs or wherever they are, even as they watch the replay later on today or later in the week. Oh God, that your anointing will just increase uh, with knowledge and understanding. Touch our ears to hear in Jesus' name. Touch our eyes to see by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Can somebody say amen? Huh? I can't hear you. Well, you ought to say it. Amen. I want you to get used to saying it because when we get back to church, amen, everybody let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. I love a church that's, that, that, that's, that's on fire for the Lord and that, 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 that there's worship and praise going on uh, collectively and also individually. Amen. Good morning, Miss Davis. Amen. We're so excited. Good morning, Miss Aquila. Little John, God bless you. Amen. As we look here, amen, again, we want to uh, ask you to turn with us today. Our first stop is going to be in the book of Matthew, chapter 6. The book of Matthew, chapter 6. And the book of Matthew, chapter 6, was written by uh, Matthew, uh, who was also called Levi, amen, which was a tax collector working for the Roman government, amen, yet he was positioned uh, there around uh, the Jerusalem area in the land we call the Holy Land. While he was working there, he met Jesus. Jesus changed his life. And, and I want you to know that that's what God will do for you. If you are, are willing, amen, to accept him for who he is, he'll change your life. Good morning, Ms. Proctor. 
Amen. Good morning. Thank y'all so much for praying with us. Good morning, Miss Peggy Mills, my friend. God bless you. And Miss Callie Stewart, uh, Deaconess Blanton, God bless you. What's up, classmate Connie Weeks? God bless you. And good morning, Miss Sharon Leach. God bless you all. It said here, amen, in the book of Matthew, amen, when uh, the, the disciples, he was teaching them how to pray. Yes, he taught them how to pray, amen, and and, th and there are certain uh, things that need to be covered in a prayer, but we'll cover that later in this, uh, uh, a little more in depth, but please know that Jesus taught them to pray, and when we pray and we uh, teach our children and grandchildren, good morning, Miss Hoey, God bless you, how you doing, amen, when we teach our children and family to pray, Amen. Uh, one thing uh, we can do is do like Jesus. Jesus taught them the Lord's Prayer. Amen. We call it the Lord's Prayer. Amen. It's the Lord's Prayer because that's the prayer the Lord, amen, taught his disciples. Amen. You won't go wrong by teaching that to your children and grandchildren. Good morning, Minister Ellis. Amen. That, that's a powerful prayer. Amen. And as we go through this prayer, amen, we, we're not going to go to, through it in its entirety, but I want you to Matthew chapter 6. If you go down to verse 13, amen, because we're looking at the power uh, and then the omnipotence of God. Can you say omnipotence? Good morning, brother Bruce, bass player young, amen, the mad thumper, amen. God bless you, brother, amen. And that's why I want to say something too to the people, musicians, amen, oh, we love God too, amen. A lot of people just think musicians just play, but musicians, we Bible study too. Amen. We, we, we study and, and, and God uh, increases our anointing. Amen. On, 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 the, on, the, on the instrument. So uh, Bible study is for all believers. Amen. Can somebody put out there in the comment for all believers? Amen. Man, God bless you, Brother Bruce. Keep thumping, brother. Keep thumping. Amen. Uh, Miss Kemp, God bless you. Again, Miss Bonner, good morning. Miss Dawkins, Miss Byers, Elizabeth Byers, and Brother Walter. Mr. Walter down in Jacksonville, Florida. God bless you. Amen. Miss Henderson, God bless you. Amen. Doing good? All right. Talk to me. Talk to me. Uh, Miss McGill, God bless you. Miss Cynthia and Brother Freeman and Miss Bernice May. Now, notice what it says here in Matthew 6, verse 13. Looking at this power here. Amen. I want you to read that out loud for me. Read it out loud where you are. Ready and let's read. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, that's the last part of the Lord's Prayer. Amen. The last portion of it there. But we want to look at that because last week we looked at where Jesus was led into the wilderness by God. Amen. He was led there by God. So God knew where he was. But then the devil came along and tempted him. Amen. In the book of James. Amen. You, um, uh, you can write this. Amen. Down James chapter one, verse 12 to verse 14. Amen. For those who are taking notes. Amen. I'm just going to talk about it briefly. It talks about the devil tempts us with evil. Amen. 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 The devil uh, 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 does not tempt us with good stuff. The devil tempts you with evil. Amen. God test us with good stuff and decisions. Now, the Bible said that God tempted Abraham, but he did not tempt Abraham to sin or to do wrong. He tempted Abraham to obey him. Somebody say amen. <laughs> See, there's a difference. Amen. And, and he said, lead us not into temptation. So the devil will tempt you to do evil. That's how you can split. That's how you can identify the, 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 the type of temptation you are going through. Amen. The devil tempts you with evil. God tempts or tests us, amen, to, to test our, our, our faithfulness to God. Amen. So that's how you distinguish the two. Amen. Amen. Now, Matthew 6. Amen. There, Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 13. It said, and lead, what's the third word in verse 13? Can somebody tell me what that is? Amen. God bless you. I, I, again, God bless you, Miss Wittenberg, Miss Henderson. God bless you, Miss Adams. Amen. Yes, yes. Bible study. Good morning, Miss Thompson. God bless you. Amen. All right. Good morning, Miss Tip. I miss you too, Miss Tip. God bless you. Miss you too. 
Miss Shippy, God bless you. Now notice what it says there. What's I'm looking for? The third word in verse 13. Good morning, Miss Copeland. God bless you. Tell Miss Miss tell your mother I say hello. Good morning, Miss Miss Annie Little John in the Bronx, New York. Good morning, Miss Brenda Johnson, Deaconess Cromwell. God bless you. The first, what's the third word in verse 13? I'm still looking for it. I told y'all I get a delay sometime. God bless you, Minister Surratt. Amen. I still ain't see. There it is. Us. Us. Lead us not. Us is, is the believers. Us are those who pray that prayer. That's why you need to pray this prayer every morning. You don't have you pray, make the Lord's prayer a part of your morning prayer. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread. Uh, uh, you, you pray that at, at 11 uh, 58 p.m. Amen. Uh, and the night is getting ready to turn to a new day. And you saying, give us this day. You only got two minutes of give us this day our daily bread. So start the morning off. If you can, incorporate the Lord's prayer into your morning, amen, prayer life. Amen. Incorporate the, uh, the Lord's prayer occasionally into your morning prayer life. Now, notice what it says in verse 13. Lead us not into temptation. Amen. And then it says, but deliver us from what? Evil. What's the word after deliver? Amen. Can somebody tell me that? What's the word after deliver? Same word, us. Amen. That is not the abbreviation for the United States. <laughs> Watch out now. Come on. Come on back with me. Yeah, that is not the abbreviation for the United States. That's us. That's mean that's other believers. That's for the believers. That's us. And deliver us. Lead us not into temptation. Us, all believers. And then it said, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil, from evil. Amen. I want you to look at the word evil then. Amen. Are you looking at it? Now, if you put a D in front of that, what you got? Huh? Come on, say it out loud. If you put a D in front of evil, what do you have? Amen. Amen. One of my friends said you got devil. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. But what you do, you got devil. Yes, the, the, the D, amen, is moved, but, but, but it's still his characteristic is that evil. He's evil. He's a devil. Evil. He's evil. So that's where we have it. So I pray that that's a blessing to you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Yes. Yes. See, the kingdom of God is not in evil things. The kingdom of God is in righteous holiness and, 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 and peaceful and pleasant and prosperous and blessing. Amen. And that, that, that's God's kingdom. Because in heaven, it said no more pain, no more sorrow. That, that's God's kingdom. But on earth, sometimes we have those things. Amen. And we pray for them that will be done in earth. That, go up to verse 10. Amen. God bless you. I want you to go up to verse 10. Amen. God bless you. If you, if you can, if you will, just go up to verse 10. Amen. We're going to read verse 10 together. And, and, and this is just uh, fresh thoughts from heaven that we want to share with you today. Putting emphasis on the kingdom of God. Amen. If you can, let's read that together. Verse 10. Ready and read. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. So what we do when we pray this prayer, we're asking for heaven to help us on earth. That's why it's so important. Amen. As we go through this and then notice it started off with God's kingdom after we acknowledge him. Amen. In verse nine, our father, which art in heaven, acknowledge, always acknowledge God at the beginning of your prayer. But then when we go back down to verse verse 13, it says, for thine is the kingdom. That's the key. Your, your kingdom is what we want to work for today, live for today, preach for, sing for today, serve for today. Amen. Be a part of today, your kingdom. And then it said, and the power. That's what we're trying to get to right there. And the real part is in the and the power. See, the power comes when you're not in the evil. The power comes when you're within God's will. The power comes, amen, if you're in the right place. The power comes if you got the right atmosphere. And that's why all of this goes into place. And my brother and sister, please be aware, amen, of, of, of your uh, surroundings, of your environment, of your friends, of your neighbors. Good morning, trustee Mitz. God bless you, sir. Amen. You got to be aware. Good morning, uh, Miss Hopper. Amen. Good morning. Amen. Now, you got to be aware of that. Good morning, uh, Brother Travis. 
uh, uh, Smith Jr. God bless you, my friend. God bless you. Amen. Good morning, Miss Sims. Amen. Mississippi. M I S S. Quick letter, quick letter. I. P P P I. God bless you. Amen. From Mississippi. Amen. Now, know what it said here. And the power and the glory. Yeah. See, what, what happens is if we're faithful to God, He'll give you the power. And through your life and your actions, you got to make sure you give God the glory. The glory is not for us. The glory is for him. Amen. So that's why he gives us the power. He gives us the power to represent him in evil, evil settings. Amen. And, and even uh, settings where uh, there's no God in sight, but you're there and you represent him. Amen. He'll give you the power if you give him the glory. Can y'all somebody put that out there in the comments? He'll give you the power. Amen. If you give him the glory and God knows who he can trust. Some people God can trust. God can't give them power. Amen. They want to charge you to pray for you. Amen. They want to charge you. Amen. To, to touch your shoulder. They, they want to charge you. Amen. To just to shake their hand. And he knows the people who use the gospel power the wrong way. And that's why he gives this anointing for those he can trust. For those that he can sure, amen, he can count on uh, to do what he says do when he says do it. God bless you. And my question is, can the Lord trust you? Huh? Can the Lord trust you? Amen. God bless you. Amen. Next stop today. We're going to Matthew chapter 9. Go to Matthew chapter 9. God bless you, brother. Amen. Oh, yeah. Matthew chapter 9. Amen. Just a few pages over. If you can get there. We think good morning, Miss 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 Edwards. Yes. Yes. If you give, he'll give you the power if you give him the glory. Yes, he will. God has to be able to trust you with such a uh, holy, uh, magnificent power. Amen. Now, Matthew 9, as we look at Matthew 9, it's a, 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 a another chapter that deals with with God moving in his miracle. Amen. Because he knows the hearts. Amen. God knows the hearts. Amen. Amen. If, if you go down to verse 4. Amen. Just, just look there. Uh, we're just going to read this briefly as we move towards verse 6. But there's, there's something just jumped out at the page at me. Ready? Let's read verse 4. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts. Amen. Said. Wherefore, think ye evil in your hearts. Good Lord of money. That's what we just talked about. See, a lot of people, amen, uh, uh, will act like they're not evil, but they, they are evil because their heart is not purified. Yes, the human being heart has to be purified. It doesn't matter, amen, your nationality. It doesn't matter, again, your pigmentation, amen, uh, degree. What matters is if your heart has been purified. Amen. And I used to hear them old folks sing, you know, a lot of them old songs. Uh, Grandpa and them old records we used to listen to. Yes, I said records. Y'all remember listening to records? <laughs> yeah, records and eight tracks and the gospel music. Amen. Now, one of the key phrases in a lot of old gospel songs is, My heart is fixed and my mind is made up. Are y'all hearing me? Can somebody put that out there in the comments? My heart is fixed and my mind is made up. Amen. And I'm thinking about old song, Let Me Lean On You. Amen. Y'all going to sing it with me? Come on. Y'all know we're going to hit one, one or two songs today. Let me lean on you. Let me lean on you. Let me lean on you. Can y'all put your hands together? Oh, Lord, let me lean on you. I can hear my grandmother. Let me lean on you. Let me lean on you. Listen to this. My soul is tired. My soul is tired. Body needs rest. My body needs rest. So oh, long, let me lean on you. That's an old gospel song. And then one part in there say, my heart is fixed. My heart is fixed. My mind's made up. My mind is made up. Oh, 
long. Yeah, see, they were saying significant strategy for getting the power so God can get the glory. Your heart has to be fixed. Listen to me. You cannot be a jealous person. You cannot be coveted. You cannot be a person who hold grudges. And that's why a lot of people in church are not effective because they hold grudges. They're jealous. They're envious of other people who do what they do. And why are you going to be jealous of another preacher? Why are you going to be jealous of another singer? Why are you going to be jealous of another musician? Why are you going to be jealous of another uh, uh, parking attendant that's driving a golf cart? <laughs> he think he's something. He's driving that golf cart. He is something. He's working for the Lord. He helping people get to the worship place. But what's that to be jealous for? You get your heart fixed and you start working in church too. But what happens is when your heart ain't fixed, people come to church wrong. They come to dressed up, looking good, smelling good, matching from head to toe, hat matching pocketbook, pocketbook match your shoes. Y'all don't hear me. Fingernail polish match your dress and your shoes. Good Lord of mine. That's the color you're going to wear all week. That's the color your fingernails determine what you're going to wear all week. Come on. But your heart is not fixed. Your heart is not fixed when you're always talking about your family and friends and putting them down. Your heart is not fixed when you talk about the pastor and the deacons and the leaders for making decisions that you might not agree with. Your heart is not fixed, amen, when you're not supporting your children and you are the children's parent. You the parent. That's your job. See, when your heart is fixed, a lot of things will take care of itself. Lord have mercy. We're just trying to help somebody understand how this thing works. Amen. How this thing works. It works when your heart is fixed. Notice what it said there in verse 4. I, I met you now in verse 4. It said, Jesus knowing their thoughts. See, that's the mind. And then he said, what y'all thinking in your heart? He didn't say what y'all thinking in your mind. If he knows their mind. He knew, see, the mind and the heart go together. And that's why this old gospel music, people say, well, they didn't know what, they, yeah, they knew what they was talking about. They knew. <laughs> they didn't have computers, but they knew. Huh? They didn't have a calculator, but they had an old scratch pad. They knew what they were figuring out. They knew. They understood that the heart and the mind worked together. Now, notice what he said. He said, well, why are you thinking it in your heart, not in your mind? See, with your heart, uh, uh, the issues of life are in your heart, and that's what controls your mind. And so my thing is, amen, why? you? That's why, amen, people listen to you and watch you and see what you're doing and what you're saying. And sometimes your heart and mind don't match, baby. It's got to match. It's about like a game of Uno. Amen. You got to put the same thing on the same thing. Somebody put the same thing. Come on, come on, come on, come on. At least you can get close when it, when you got the same color pattern. <laughs> red going red. You you getting close, but you got to have the same thing on the heart and mind. You got and I'm gonna use the number number eight. You got to have eight. Hey Amen. You playing Uno? Uh, 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 the mind eight and the heart eight. Why do you say eight, Reverend? Because eight is a new beginning. Good God, my I feel like talking in the end this morning. You got to have the new beginning in your heart and mind. And that's why Jesus said, what you thinking in your heart? Now, have mercy. Move on over to verse, verse 6. We got to get to verse 6. Now, this, no, let's do 5. We can't leave 5 out. I'm sorry. Verse 5. Verse 5. I'm sorry. I cannot skip 5 because whew, 5 is on the door step of 6. <laughs> and I'm trying to get you to the door. God bless you. Verse 5, everybody read out loud. My friend, God bless you, everybody. Read out loud if you can. If you can't, just move your mouth. Don't say nothing. Act like you're reading out loud. Come on, help me now. Read and read. For whether it's easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and walk. It's easy to say your sins be forgiven you. But this man was lame and couldn't move. And Jesus saw him, saw him that sick. He said, so that y'all would know I got power, you get up and walk. 
See, what's, see, a lot of people want the easy way out, but when God proves stuff to us, a lot of time he'll prove it in the hardest situation. And what happens is a lot of people ignore God's miracles. And their heart still messed up worse. God done did all this stuff for you and your family, and you still don't come to church. God done did all this stuff for people and their families, and they still don't come to church. He done got them out of trouble, done got them out of this, and got them new jobs, got them new houses, and they still don't pay their tithes. Their heart not fixed. Amen. That's why the gospel is, is the answer. Amen to 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 salvation and to amen uh, education in Christianity. It has to get good morning, classmate Bachman. God bless you, Marcella. God bless you down in Atlanta. God bless you. Now notice what it said here. Now know what it said here. He said, "What's easier?" Verse verse six. Here we go. Verse six. Verse six. Here we go. He said, "But that ye may know." Come on, read it out loud, women. That, that the Son of Man have power on earth to forgive sins. Good Lord, man. You mean he got power? Yeah, he has power. God has power on earth. Didn't we say a while ago, in earth as it is in heaven? He has power on earth to forgive sins. Yes, he does. He has the power on earth to forgive us. And that's why he has power to clean up any heart. If it's dirty, filthy, dirty, nasty heart, evil heart, a, a, a devilish heart, God can fix it if you let him. Amen. That's why them old preachers and, and old deacons used to say he's a mind fixer, a heart fixer, and a mind regulator. Same thing. Heart and mind. It's got to be. Anybody ever heard that phrase through the years in church? He is a heart fixer. In a mind regulator. Lord have mercy. Amen. My granddad used to say regulator. <laughs> that was his word for control. Yeah. God, God, God regulates our thoughts when your heart is right. That's why some people flip on you. <laughs> that one day they're the kindest. You think they're the kindest Christian in the world. And then the next thing you know, you like Jesus and get behind me, Satan. What's that coming out of you? You the same person that were praying and singing all these church songs, and now you cussing like that? You you putting down your family like that? You putting down your co-workers like that? Hmm? See, uh, uh, blessings and cursings should not come out of the same mouth. If the heart is right. Oh, we just talking about a heart fixing your mind made up. Hey Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Good morning, uh, Miss Dada. God bless you. He made it. Glad he made it. God bless you, Miss Dowder. We're so happy for you and your family. And Brother Rico, her, her son is a Dallas Cowboy running back. God bless you. So happy for you. Now notice what it says here. Amen. In verse 6, he said that you know that I got power to forgive sins. Amen. And, and, and on earth, he said, then he said to the sick of the palsy. See, that's what God does. He, he talked to them one way, but he was still talking to the one who wanted the blessing another way. And that's why sometimes in a sermon, it get kind of tight sometimes. Because the sermon part, the sermon is for everybody, but sometimes God is speaking directly to some. And then the next sentence or phrase might be directly for somebody else. He told them, what y'all thinking in your mind? And then he looked at the other man and said, Amen. And, 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 and verse 6, he said, arise and take up your bed and walk. See, what's a blessing for some, amen, might not be a blessing to others. Good morning, Miss Cullen. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're out of the hospital. Amen. He said here, amen, and, and, uh, that, 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 that's what he said in verse 7. What did he say in verse 7? Let's read that together. And he arose and departed to his house. The man that couldn't even walk. All of a sudden, he got up and walked home. Yes, when you get saved, go home. <laughs> God don't save you to hang out in the streets. God don't save you to hang out all night. Go home. Help your family. Let them see the changes in you. If anybody know you've been changed, they know at home. And that's why sometimes people at home look at you like, 
Because they know you ain't, you're not serious. You're just putting on. People at home know. A lot of time in the Bible when Jesus did, even the man that would found himself out there in the tombs, a man, and I believe Mark chapter 5, he was out there cutting himself with stones. But when he met Jesus and, and Jesus changed him and put on and the man put on clothes and he was in the right frame of mind, he said, Jesus, I want to go with you. Jesus said, no, go home. So they can see your changed heart. Go home so they can see the new you. Go home <laughs> and, uh, and change your son and your daughter. Go home and and tell your wife you're sorry. Go home and tell your husband you, you're sorry for putting him through what you took him through. Yeah, yeah. See, if your heart fixed, you'll go home. Good Lord, man. You'll go home and get because because if you're not not right with the people at home, how you gonna be right with the people at the job? If you're not right, right with the people who done supported you and helped you, if you can't say I'm sorry to them. Why would you say it to a stranger? God bless you. Good morning, Miss Karen Patrick in the house. Well, this is some serious stuff. And verse 8, I think our last verse, verse 8. And then we got we got another stop to make in a few minutes. Got another stop to make in a few minutes. Verse 8, everybody, ready to read loud as you can. I want you to read out loud. Miss Tamika, if you could, if you can whisper, whisper. If you can't, put your hand up over your mouth. And I want you to say that thing. Because your faith. Comes by hearing. Sometimes you got to hear yourself. Yeah, sometimes we need to give you, yeah, you need to hear the pastor. You need to hear the Sunday school teachers. You need to hear the other ministers. Amen. Or you need to hear, amen, your your, your, your parents. But 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 you need sometimes you need to hear yourself. Yeah, yeah. Are you gonna lie to yourself? <laughs> See, sometimes that's why you need to talk to yourself sometimes. Amen. Yeah. I remember old song. It said I had a long talk with myself. Sometimes, like, y'all don't remember that one, do you? Hey Amen. I'll sing that one from you later on. <laughs> God bless you. What verse I said we on? Verse 8. Here we go. Loud as you can. Verse 8. Loud as you can. Ready and go. But when the multitude saw it, please continue, they marveled and glorified. See that glorified? God which had given such power unto who? Men. He gave it to ordinary people, ordinary men and women of God. Amen. Uh, the missionaries, to the, to the youth advisors, God gives them power to do what they do. The van drivers, to put up with them attitudes. Amen. You, you two minutes early. And we're on our way to church. Would you please come on and get on? Nice to see you this morning. Sometimes you just have to hear stuff, but don't hear it. Amen. You with me? He gives you power. And if you don't have that power, you'll be snappy and crappy. Oh, Lord. That, I'm trying to help somebody understand. Are you snappy and crappy all the time? If you are, you need God to pray. You need God to give you that power to fix your heart. Amen. If you want to help people, you got to be a good. I, one thing I found out about business, I worked in the corporate world. Amen. For, for uh, several years, I've worked for uh, uh, corporations. I worked for the state. Amen. I've worked for, but all of those jobs I had, you have to deal with people. And in church, if you're going to be a servant of God, guess who we deal with? People. Amen. I met a young man one time, a young man, a young preacher. And um, he said, what can I do uh, to, 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 to help? I want to learn. I said, well, you know, if I, if I have something for you, I'll call you and you can come and and sit with me, and I'll, I'll and I'll let you do some things. And and then somebody passed, and uh, they didn't have any preachers uh, to do the scripture or the prayer. So I called him. I said, "Young man, I said, there's an opportunity to minister to to help a family in need." I said, "What you doing? Would you like to be a part of this service?" There, uh, ask if there were any preachers, you know, that I knew that would like to come. And he said, um, "No, I don't like funerals." I said, "What?" You don't like funerals. Don't you understand that funerals are a part of Christianity? Jesus died. <laughs> if you're not going to be, if you're going to be a good preacher, you got to deal with, with, with funerals. And all I'm trying to say is if you're going to be a good Christian or witness, you got to deal with people. We are to help people. Amen. Not robots, not, not toys. 
uh, not stuffed animals, <laughs> not figurines. You got to deal with people. And if you can't deal with people, you 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 got the heart. You need a heart adjustment. I'm just trying to help you understand. Uh, uh, you you got to deal with people. Good morning, Miss Byers. Amen. God bless you, brother Gaffney. Amen. God bless you, uh, Reverend Copeland. I bless you, my sister. I love you. God bless you. Amen. Now notice what it says here. Good morning, Miss Lisa Petty. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We're rolling on. Now notice what it said. He said when the people saw it. See, he was talking to some of them. God sees how you act and react. People see when you when your faith kick in or not. This man was laying down there sick, but when his faith kicked in, the people saw it. People see when the Holy Ghost fall on you. People see when you start being nice and stop cussing and, 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 and fussing and all of that mess. They can see the change in you. That something on the inside is working on. Now, somebody done said that before. You done said that before in somebody's church. Amen. Something on the inside is working on the outside. Mr. Paul McDowell in the Gospel Choir said, from the inside out. <laughs> huh? He cleaned me up from the inside out. Inside out. Yeah, when your heart get fixed, your mind get fixed, and then you'll start, uh, your godliness and your Christianity will become a part of your, your life. It'll become a part of your response. It'll become a part of your reply. Amen. Instead of always being snappy and crappy. Somebody put that out there. I'm looking for it. I'm, I got a delay over here. I got a delay over here, but I'm looking for snappy and crappy. Good morning, Councilwoman Shippey. God bless you. God bless you, school trustee. Woman Shippey. God bless you. I'm so proud of you. Good morning, double A. Double A in the house. Angela Andrews. God bless you. Tana, 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 Tana. Sandra Watts, God bless you. I love you. Now, know what it said here. It said they marveled. They, they saw it and they marveled. Wow. What did I just, what just happened? And then they said, and they glorified. They began to praise him. See, when other people get blessed, do you praise and glorify God with them? Or you just only do it when you sing it? <laughs> see, I see, I see some people, they only get happy when they sing. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm happy with, with, with whoever sings and gets singing the best they can. And doing the best they can and reaching down in their soul and hit them high notes they ain't never hit before. Oh, I can get glorified. I can glorify the Father. See, he knows who to give the power to. Because he's going to get the glory. He'll give you the power if you give God the glory. We just talked about that, didn't we? See, he gave God the glory and God gave him the power. Good morning, Miss Shirley. Up there in Shelby, North Carolina. God bless you. Sna snapping crap. Are they coming in here? That's a daily double. Amen. God bless you. And then it said, that last part, which had given such power unto men. If you don't have power, you need to go back to the altar. Down on your knees. To stay there till you get the Holy Ghost power. Hmm? Yeah, and in, 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 in this time of pandemic, the altar could be in your house. Yeah, the altar could be in your car. The altar could be out in the yard digging in the flowers. Wherever that spot is that you can, you and God can get together and, and you can let him work on you. He'll work on you. And he'll fix that thing. Somebody put out there, he'll fix it. Jesus will fix it. Go to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. We're moving in here. Amen. Then my question is, amen. Amen. And I'm just going to ask you this question. It, it, it's not in the Bible this way. But the question is, amen. Why? Is the heart and mind so important to a believer? Amen. Why is the heart and mind so important to a believer? I want to see what your answers are. Put your answers out there. We just went over the heart and mind. Amen. I want to see your answers. 
Amen. All right, John chapter 10, we're moving on talking about this power. So God gives this power to us, the believer, to us, the believers who act on what he says do. John chapter 10, John chapter 10 was written by John. John was the brother of James. John was one who loved God. And John was one who uh, loved God so much that uh, at, around about the Lord's Supper, it said he leaned on Jesus' bosom. Amen. They were, they were good friends. At least leaned on his buddy. Amen. You can lean on me. Amen. And John knew Jesus so well uh, that he, 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 he had that, that, that relationship with him. And that's why John talked about him being the son of God. Amen. He knew he was. John knew he wasn't just an ordinary man, but he was the son of God. John talked about this all through the book of John. That's why it said, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son in John 316. John talked about Jesus being the son of God. And that's one thing we have to understand that uh, Jesus is a man, but but Jesus was also the son of God. Born of a virgin named Mary. Amen. Yes, he was. And in John chapter 10, I'm getting there. Chapter 10, uh, which it, we, we, John, uh, for those who are taking notes, John chapter 10 deals with the devil's ways and it deals with God's ways. So when you want to do a test on yourself, a self examination, amen. Can somebody put out there in the comments a self examination? Good morning, Miss Crosby. Miss Carol Crosby. Amen. Good morning, Brother Mintz. God bless you, man. Now, if you want to do a self-examination, read uh, uh, verse chapter 10, John 10. Good morning, Miss T. Cora. Oh, that's my friend right there. Amen. That's my dancing partner. I love you, Miss T. Cora, and your family. Hope all is well. Hope y'all having a good, safe time there in Atlanta. Amen. Now, notice what it says. Now, John deals with the, the devil ways and it deals with God's way. Amen. And I'm going to show you the difference. Amen. We, I'm, I'm just going to highlight this. We're going to look at it later in depth a little bit later. Amen. But I want to show you something in verse 10. Just stop at verse 10. Excuse me. Stop at verse 10. Stop at verse 10. And then we're going to go to our designated scriptures. And I want to thank God for you. And I want to thank God uh, for your patience with me. Because God is moving. His power is moving right now. 10-10. Can you say 10-10? Amen. If you can always remember John 10 and verse 10. Amen. That is a quick identifier to let you know the characteristics of an evil, devilish person. And then also, amen, uh, uh, that last part gives us a quick definition of a godly person. Amen. There is a difference. Can somebody put there is a difference? Amen. The, the normal person will look at your clothes and determine if you are if you if you if you holy or not. <laughs> it take more than that. Amen. It take more than clothes. Amen. You got to have a heart fixed and your mind made up. God bless you. See, a lot of people who 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 are 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 are, are surface uh, Christians or they look at the surface, but you got to look beneath. The surface. Good morning, Miss Ellis. God bless you. Verse 10, 10. Let's read it. Read and read. Loud as you can. The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. Amen. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The first uh, part deals with the devilish way. Steal, kill, destroy. I always want to hurt somebody. Hurt your feelings. Hurt you physically. Hurt you mentally. Hurt you financially. Borrow from you and won't pay you back. <laughs> that that's not a godly characteristic, you know. <laughs> Amen. It's not, it's, it's not. It's not a godly characteristic. So that's why you get you you can learn a lot from people just by watching how they act and interact, how they handle their own personal business. Amen. Good morning, Reverend Boyd. I love you, man. Amen. Uh, good morning, uh, Miss Duncan. Yes, there's a difference. So there we see the difference. And God's difference is, I come to give you life. The paralyzed man got life. He was able to go back home with his family. That's life. Separated from your family, not life. So he got to, get, he got to go and, and live life. 
Amen. Like, like, amen. And and all and more abundantly. Uh, I preach Sunday. Amen. First Corinthians 15 and 58. Uh, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. That's abundantly. Abounding, always increasing. Amen. So that's the way. All right, here we go. 17, go down to 17, 17, 17, go down to 17. Amen. Can y'all meet me down at verse 17? Meet me there. Amen. For some of y'all already there. Some of y'all beat me there, but the rest of you meet me there. God bless you. <laughs> Watch out. I feel like rhyming in here. A gospel rhyme. Mm -hmm. Not a nursery rhyme. Oh, no. I'm not going to talk about Mother Hubbard. No, 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 no. But I'm going to give you a rhyme about the father of time, which is God. God controls time and eternity. John 10, verse 17. This is very important. All right, all right, all right. John 10, verse 17. Here we go, loud as you can. Ready, let's go. Therefore, doth my father love me. Because I lay down my life that I might take it again. So for those who have a highlight, highlight that. You got to lay down your life that he might take it again. He laid it down. That meant that he had authority. He knew what was going to happen. And he had confidence what was going to happen. And he understood that he was born to die. See, when you know what your purpose is in Christianity, amen, there's no need to worry, no need to fret, no need to get upset. He understood that. Now, some people, uh, when, when transition comes, they feel like they're losing power. That's why they don't want to leave. I heard that there's a man that said if he, if he lose in November, he wasn't going to leave. But I guarantee you he will. Amen. When he lose. If people go out and vote for what's right. See, people want what's right. You got to you gotta look beyond names on, 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 under the name and just look under if, they, if you think that person lines up with God more than the other. <laughs> that, that, that's what the... See, we, we vote on stuff. Uh, the issues are not always what you need to vote on. You don't need to vote on the issues. The issues will take care of themselves if the heart is right and the mind is right. See, the, 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 the political process has people confused. You don't vote on the issues that the electives handle the issues. Your job is to, to vote on the person you feel hopefully best represent God's way. Because when they get in, guess what they're going to do? They're going to do it God's way. Now you make up your mind. Amen. Who you think you're going to vote for. Amen. And then make up your mind who you're going to vote for because you need to go vote. Whoever you vote for, go vote. Amen. Know what he said? I, 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 my father loved me, and because of this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay it, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay it down so that I can take it again. Verse 18, very important. Now, however loud you read the last time, I want you to read this a little bit louder. Amen. Read this a little bit louder. Ready? Read. No man taking it, it from me, but I lay it down of myself. Hmm. See, a lot of people are not able to get their breakthrough in life because you got to learn how to lay down certain things. You got to learn how to lay down what God say lay down. You need to learn how to leave what God say leave. You got to learn how to let go what God say let go. And lots of time when you let it go, it's a test. When, when Abraham let Isaac go, he said, you've been waiting for this son for a hundred years and I give him to you. And now uh, you've been looking at him more than you've been looking at me. I need you to let him go. That's the only thing. It was a test to see if he loved God more than he loved the son. And, and Abraham did. He grabbed the son and grabbed a servant and grabbed the wood and grabbed the sacrifice. And as a matter of fact, they didn't even have a sacrifice. He said, the Lord will provide. He just told me to go up to this mountain. And didn't know that his sacrifice was walking with him. And he said, Abraham, if you love me, put your son on there. And uh, 
tied up Isaac and laid him on the altar. Mm, and uh, about that time, he grabbed the knife and was beginning to say, God, you know, I'm going to trust you. And before he came down on Isaac, God stopped him and said, I've tested you. I've, tempt I've tempted you. Your love for me have been tested, not with evil. But I tested you with obedience. And that's what we talked about from the first part of this lesson. God will test your obedience. It's going to be on something you love or somebody you love or somebody you really care about. A car, a job. And sometimes to get God's favor, to get God's abundance, he's going to test you. You're going to have to lay something down sometime. And when he, when he stopped Abraham, he said, Abraham... If you kill your son, sin is still going to be here. But uh, in a few hundred years from now, I'm going to send my son. And uh, he's going to understand this purpose right here. So what he's going to do, he's going to lay it down. <laughs> because if he lay it down, I'm going to give him power to pick it up again. God of money. Some of you right now are living in a bigger house, amen, than the one you used to live in. When you laid that other one down and got right with God and start using your money the right way, God will give you more and bigger and better. God increases us on our obedience. Some people will never get there. Why do you say that, Rev? I say that because they don't want to get there. They want to be disobedient. They want to be disrespectful. They, they don't want to love their pastor. Amen. Been the pastor for, for 25 years and they never come to the pastor anniversary. <laughs> but that's all right. It's okay. God going to fix it anyway. <laughs> you see what I'm trying to say? See, God knows the heart of them who comes to worship and who don't come to worship. And, and some of the ones that don't come to worship, heart is better than some of the ones that do. Sometimes those are the ones that bless the pastor. Yeah. See, God got people Amen. That, 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 that's trying to do it the right way. Somebody's about trying to do it the right way. If you want to get blessed, do it the right way. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Now, notice what he said. He said, no man take it from me. I lay it down. I have power to lay it down. That's the next part in verse 18. He said, I got power to lay it down. Don't you know that when they came to get him and he could have just Knocked them all down. The Bible said he could. And as a matter of fact, he did knock, knock them down on one occasion. But he didn't hurt them. But he was just letting them know that he had power. Hmm. And then he said he could have called down 10,000 angels. But no, he just let them kill him. Because he knew that if they killed him, he was going to live again. And then he could save us so that he could give us power to get our heart and mind right. So Jesus died for you to get your heart and mind right. Let him fix it. Stop making excuses and let him fix it. He'll fix it. I know. He did it for me. He did it for me. I wasn't perfect. Amen. Still not perfect. But my heart is fixed. My mind made up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to serve him until it's time to go. When is it time to go? I don't know. I want to live a long life. I'm like Dr. King. I want to live a long life. Longevity has its place. I want to live to be 150 if I can. But if he called me, I got to go. You with me? You got to go too. So why are you waiting on your Christianity? Why are you, people are dependent on your growth. Somebody you know, or maybe a complete stranger, is, is dependent on your, your Christianity and your development. Are you developing where you can help people? Hmm. Or you just don't care about them? See, if you care about God, you, you got to grow. You got to grow. God bless you. Hey, man, verse 19, 19, 19. Good Lord, time flying when you're having fun. Man, it's flying. Verse 19. Excuse me. Finish in 18. I have power to take it in this commandment I have received of my father. He received that commandment of his father. So Jesus even had rules to follow. Jesus had to be obedient. And my question is, I mean, you can answer this by answering yes or no. If Jesus had to be obedient, 
Do you think that we who follow him and the us and lead us not into temptation, the us, the we, the people of God, do you think it's important for us to be obedient? Yes or no? I want to see your answers out there. For those who may not put your answer out there, what's your answer though? What's your answer? Yes or no? Yes. Jesus' power came from his obedience. I'm, 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 that's why you got to make your children and grandchildren obey you. It's not cute every time they say something back at you and roll their eyes at you. Wait, wait till they get a little bit bigger. They're going to swing on you. That's one of the key lessons he teach us to obey honor your mother and father that your days might be long. And, and with grandparents and aunts and uncles and school teachers and policemen and everybody who don't make people be obedient uh, you, that, that, you contribute into their uh, destruction a lot of times, especially with children. If, if you don't catch them early, it, it, it's, it's going to be a problem after a while. And if, if you don't handle it, hey amen, the police will handle it. If the police don't handle it, uh, the school will handle it. If the school don't handle it, and I, as they used to say, and my, and my, and my granddaddy and, and the, older, you know, the older guys and the older uh, generation, there's somebody in the streets to handle it. <laughs> So you better handle that thing. Discipline. Discipline. Because somebody put discipline. Even godly discipline. Godly discipline. Well, the, the pastor didn't tell me to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Out of order. I'm going to do this. The deacon stuff. No, no. Did you talk to a deacon first? Out of order. One of the major problems in the church of God is lack of discipline. Church still has order. Amen. Church still has order. Still, you the president of it, but you did you talk to the pastor about it? <laughs> it's still order. Order. Isn't it amazing that 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 the most troublesome person in the world, uh, that the most disorderly person in the world, uh, I don't care what type of attitude they have, uh, go sit up in court mad, but all rise. I bet they'll get up. <laughs> if they don't get up, you know what's happening, don't you? They'll get a rebuke, and then lots of time they'll tell them take them to the slammer. Mhm. Mm so why isn't it that, that we who love God can't rise when the pastor says, "Please stand"? I've been standing all day. You stand for the man eight, ten, twelve hours on your job. You can't stand up for three minutes with everybody and give God a hand claps and thank. Stand in line in two minutes at Carowin. I mean, for two hours at Carowin, wins to ride one ride that lasts two minutes. <laughs> and you can't stand and give God two minutes of praise. Come on. Miss Lamunda, God bless you. Oh, man. We got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. Amen. Verse 19. We got to go. We're going we're gonna to read 19 and 20 together. We're going to do this is the daily double. Woo, woo, bing, 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 bing. You just won the daily double. 19 and 20. Here we go. Ready to read. There was a division, therefore, um, again, amongst the Jews for these sayings. And verse 20. And many of them said, he had the devil and is mad. Why are you going to hear him? See, that's the voice of the enemy. Good morning, Deacon Blanton. Good morning. That's the voice of the enemy. The voice of the enemy would say, you don't have to look at, look, look at the deacons. You don't have to listen to them. They're just doing what the pastor said. They're just doing it. No, you, just, you see, the voice of the enemy would always try to question your leadership. Amen. If the leadership is wrong, God will handle them. If the fellowship is wrong, God will handle them. But if the leadership and the fellowship is right, God going to bless them. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. I'm trying to let you see how this thing works. That's why you can't listen to everybody that want to talk about church folk in church. Because the devil would like to talk about it too. The devil like to talk about it. That's what it said. The ones that had the devil, the, the one of, the, of division. God is not about division. God is about unity. So that's how that's why you gotta listen to people. Amen. Are you trying to put doubt in my mind? Are you trying to put assurance and faith in my mind? The devil comes to give you doubt. God comes to give you faith to get you out. 
Amen. That's it for the day. Good Lord. What a Bible study. What a Bible study. Amen. What a Bible study. So again, God bless you. I hope you got that power. That power to live for God. That power. Amen. To, to represent him. That power. Amen. To shine in darkness. That power to help those who don't help you. That power. Amen. To make your heart and your mind and your mouth line up. It's got to line up. It's got to line up. That's how we know. You're a disciple of God if you have peace for one another. Not putting each other down and talking about them and, and think that make you look good, but just because you can cuss. A parent can cuss too if you teach them the words. <laughs> yes, Lord. What a sir. What a wonderful study. God bless you. Thank you for your time today. I um, hope you had a good time. I know I did. I pray, my brothers and sisters, that you will be positioned to live a powerful life the rest of your life. Not only the rest of this day, but the rest of your life, you will have that power to win. Pray much for a man, Miss Kathy Branton, who is still recovering. God bless you again, Miss Kathy. I pray you're getting well, uh, your surgery, and you're still walking better and everything day by day. Pray for Giorgio Foster. Giorgio Foster is... Amen. A uh, member of the Cherokee County uh, um, Sheriff Department. He works there with the Sheriff Department and he is severely ill from COVID-19, uh, which I do believe that uh, several of the workers there and a couple of the of the um, the incarcerated uh, uh, are, are uh, sick with this virus. Uh, Brother Giorgio was moved to Duke a couple of days ago and he is uh, stable. Uh, but yet in serious condition. Pray much that he can bounce out of this thing. That God will give him power just like God raised this guy up. That God can raise him and others up. And pray for our sheriff and all leaders who have to make decisions. For all pastors. For all over the world have to make decisions about worship. About praise in the parking lot. Uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, uh, in the church spread out with different uh, um, restrictions in place. Uh, still wanting to keep people safe. And again, I thank you. During this time, you still can grow. During this time, you still can worship. During this time, amen, you still can support your church. During this time, you still can be a missionary. During this time, you still can be on the choir. You can sing with them, even though the whole choir is not there. This is a time for you to grow individually. This is a time for you to perfect your praise. This is a time for you to, uh, 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 to encourage yourself. To begin witnessing at home. Maybe you're one that didn't don't witness during church. Don't say amen. Don't do anything that the pastors ask you to do. Say neighbor, oh neighbor. I ain't saying that. They ain't my neighbor. Yes, they are your neighbor. The whole world is your neighbor. Amen. This is our father's world. The earth is the laws and the fullness thereof. And when you learn how to worship him, and this might be the test. This might be the test. God has given the whole world. Can you worship me at home? <laughs> Can you worship me at home? I heard people say, Son, Rev, on Sunday morning, they get fully dressed like they come to church and have church at home. They just don't want to have their pajamas on watching. Uh -uh. They want to give God their best. They were taught that. And some people still do that even with the home worship. So again, whatever you, you have to do to, 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 to get with God and to get your to your place of worship. Amen. You get there. Amen. You get that. You, your pocketbook, everything still matching. Don't nobody see it but you. But you and God is happy. He pleased with your efforts of praise. Pretty much for Brother Zor Watson family. I mean, for his family. Zor has gone on. His, he has, has come to the end of his earthly road. But we do want you to ask, remember his family in prayer. Amen. His wife and children and family and friends. Amen. Ruth D. Lee Gregory Galt. Amen. The aunt of our very own Miss Charlene Littlejohn and our very own Miss Lisa Glenn. Amen. Went to glory. Her quiet hour will be Friday. Amen. From four to six at the uh, community mortuary there in Union, South Carolina. And also, amen, the uh, graveside service will be Saturday the 12th at 11 a.m. at the um Jerusalem Baptist Church there in Jonesville, uh, where the, my friend and brother, the Reverend Dr. Dwayne Cooper, is a very fine pastor. 
And uh, I just want your family to know that we love you. And under these circumstances, amen, we, uh, we are not able to uh, support and be there like we normally would. But know that prayers can go where we can't do, go and do what we cannot do. God bless you. I love you all. Amen. Amen. Stay safe. Stay safe. Bow your heads. Father, we thank you for our lesson today. We pray, oh God, for uh, the, the, the uh, Galt family. We pray, oh God, for the Watts family. We pray, oh God, for Miss Branton and others who are still recovering from surgery. Thank you, God, even for my father. Keep your hands on him. And God, thank you for all these listeners today. All over this country, all over the world, some may listen. But thank you for your word that makes this possible. Father, I pray that you will bless them in their growth and as they do self-examinations. God, that they will be real with themselves and ask God to fix what needs fixing. God, we have to line up with your word the best we can. Again, we're not perfect, but we're striving for perfection. Thank you, God, for looking over us. Forgive us of our sins and shortcomings. That we be, may be able to receive that power that you give unto men. Uh, that we, we can receive that power that others can see and be marveled. And also come to faith and service of you. God, we pray for churches everywhere. That, that the godly order is in, in place. We pray, oh God, for members everywhere. That they will honor their membership and their leadership. And Father, they will do what they can to help make things better. Thank you for the Concord Baptist Church. For those who have already gone to glory, God, for those of us who are still here, and God, for the generations to come, help us do what we can to make this world a better place so they too will be equipped, have the things they need to serve you. Thank you for church. Thank you for church people, and thank you for Jesus. Keep us safe all week long. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can y'all say amen? Huh? What did you say? I love you. I hope you have a wonderful week, and may God bless you. And again, we'll be at church uh, again at 10, my friend, uh, with the Sunday morning worship service live on Facebook and YouTube. Have a wonderful week. God bless you and yours.